Welcome back to another episode of the Anatomy of the Trade. Today we're going to discuss a couple of my trades that did not go that well, and I do want to discuss those, as we usually do with Franz. Franz, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well, Roman. Thanks for asking. All right, so let's just jump right into it. And the first trade is in the Insight Corporation. This is one of the stocks that I loved so much and I really, really wanted to have that position. Look initially at the trading range that we have here. And by the way, there is more causality to the left. Um, we're not showing that here just because we want to see uh, the individual bars. But going into the COVID-19 reaction, uh, we have a slight out performance here that you could see this in the relative strength. Instead of significantly going down, the stock is actually uh, uh, nimbling down, you know, committing to the downside, but not aggressively. Uh, and that produces the out performance. We're also observing institutional participation in the volume signature. And then the recovery is uh, pretty amazing. So it came to my uh, screen somewhere here. And initially, I just kind of did not go in into this position. Um, and that could have been that first initial mistake, something that, you know, Franz and I, we have to discuss. Uh, at the same time, uh, after the run, once it started to go above 85, I felt like, you know, the reaction probably is going to come back into this area. And this would be a better time to initiate uh, initial position. Um, which I have, and the first point of the entry came right off the screen right here. Add-on, another add-on, um, trying to see if the price could just uh, leave the trading range right away. And one of my uh, mistakes is observing the change of behavior in the trading range in phase B and initiating the position there. So what this mistake does to me is that I will have to go through uh, some kind of painful reaction uh, leading into potential phase C. Usually that reaction is gonna be associated with some kind of emotional pain. I'm gonna attribute this pain to all of my past experiences that I have had in numerous stocks, numerous situations like this, and then uh, there comes a point of exit just based on that. So I was just discussing with Franz, you know, prior to the recording, um, you know, some of the trades and some of our experiences. And um, uh, one of the hardest things is to bring the mistake on the surface, to start seeing the pattern. I call this the commonality of your mistakes. You're going to repeat your mistakes the same way, and you want to catch that. You want to catch the uh, commonality of the mistake, understand what is going on, understand the emotional aspect of the mistake as well, and how that influences your behavior, and then figure out the feedback loop uh, where you could just, in the moment, say, I'm doing this again. And actually, today, um, I've been working on this, um, uh, you know, correction, getting out of the position prior to the stop loss being hit. And I was holding myself up today, uh, you know, not closing a specific position. Um, so uh, I'm really, really trying to work on this. But coming back to the trade, so three entries on the way up. So the size went up uh, considerably. I was about 50% in size at this point of time. Um, and then as we uh, go down in price, uh, that obviously produces that emotional pain that I've talked about. Um, and right here on this bar, in anticipation that we might actually go and hit maybe 85, the moving average here, and the stop loss was at 88 right here. Um, I'm just closing this position. So obviously a mistake, regardless of whether we're going to go down or not, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but what matters is how do we behave in this situation when that emotional pain is kind of like at the at the highest point. Franz, your first initial thoughts on this? A whole lot of thoughts, Roman. Um, but let's cut right to the chase. 
Uh, one of the things you mentioned is that you know you have a tendency to maybe uh, jump the gun just a little bit in phase B. Yes. How how do you deal with that? What what kind of a, a potential? Because if you can if you can figure out a rule that might you know that might make you second you know take a second look when you're still in phase B you might not you might actually be entering where you've got your exit sign there at exit number one so what what sort of I mean for we're each different from your standpoint and you're you're an extremely advanced trader um, but what kind of a rule might you consider setting for yourself mm -hmm. uh, yeah to that's keep yourself from getting to getting whacked in phase B that's a really good question and um, my first kind of reaction to that which I've implemented was just all about sizing right so I could say yeah I'm recognizing that this could be a reaccumulation this could be just a pause in the established uptrend after a sign of strength and we are just in the backing up action but I'm coming in earlier um, I think it's okay to do that if your size is correct so if you have like a smaller size you could go through the reaction into phase C and still be okay because it will not bother you that emotionally and you could start adding on the more significant size as we go out of phase C now that always kind of uh, coincides with the thinking what if this is phase C a true phase C and not phase B so for instance like here right so the true phase C was here but yet at that time we might be thinking and this is actually was my thinking I didn't initiate the position here but at that time when we were discussing this you know in WMD I, I think my comment was that this is phase C and it looked like phase C uh, so imagine that I'm uh, undersizing this and then it actually goes up so then it's it's a regret of not having the correct size at the correct time and if I'm oversizing it like I started doing here then when you go into phase C and the heat is on so that becomes a problem as well because that produces another emotional problem like you know a pain uh, about uh, potential loss so that was kind of like first thought so the size the second thought was all about just the analysis itself what am I missing in my analysis that I'm not um, identifying phase C more correctly and more precisely and I'm identifying some certain conditions that are pertaining to phase C but those are not necessarily true phase C so those were some thoughts but not the rules fronts mm -hmm. well it's everybody has been in exactly this position and it's it's one of those uh it's one of those quandaries that you find yourself in and just know yourself know your tendencies and i think the sizing the sizing algorithm that you have for yourself is is probably the best answer that that I could come up with for myself in this kind of position because it's you know losing money is not fun and as you start losing it's our tendency you know as prices go down in the markets which is a crazy thing um, you know, we want to sell, but even though prices are getting cheaper, you, you, if you're in the grocery store, prices are getting cheaper and you're buying more, but it's, you know, it's the emotional strain of losing money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's jump to the second stock. Um, this is Activision and again, most recent trades. Um, so most evident mistakes that I'm making and I want to uh, bring those mistakes to your attention guys um, and somebody new who is watching this recording might be saying like what is he doing why is he showing his mistake isn't he an educator and you know he has to show like the best trades that he has and so on and so forth well to me a lot of learning comes from 
coming back to what we've done, identifying our mistakes, trying to understand the emotional component behind it, the analytical component behind it, the process component behind it, and trying to understand how did mistake come about. Because if we don't see our mistakes and we don't try to correct them, in the future, everything's going to be the same. The behaviors are going to repeat. Uh, the only difference is going to be different market environment. And some of the mistakes will be more over-exaggerated and some of the mistakes will be invincible because they will be so small, but they still will be there. So I have no problem coming uh, and showing uh, to you all of these mistakes. And that's what you should do as well, at least with yourself. So here is another stock, uh, Activision. Um, and, you know, this is a little bit different in terms of how it played out. Because um, this was a theme trade that I had and that I still have on. And this is just one of the stocks in this theme. So Electronic Arts was another. Um, and I still have a sizable position in there. So still on. And then Zinger is also still on and quite sizable. So sometimes I would kind of probe the theme with different stocks and would leave one over another. I think in this case, this was not necessarily necessary, especially the way how the stock was behaving. So I was just trying to maybe concentrate, you know, uh, the holdings on this theme in a one or two stocks and ATVI was just not, uh, was underperforming relative to, to those two. Uh, so here the entry seems to be okay. We are in the trading range. Phase C shows, you know, this COVID-19 reaction, which is um, outperforming. We see this in the relative strength. We see this in the comparative strength as well. We're seeing a lot of institutional participation. So a lot of buying right there at around 55. Sign of strength and then a backing up action. So we are getting out of the trading range, uh, out of the backing up action, buying on the way up. Uh, right away being rewarded and then just underperformance uh, for some time, for like a month. And then on the second attempt to go down, I'm closing that position. There was really nothing there analytically that I shouldn't have seen, uh, you know, in terms of uh, like the dangers. Uh, the stop loss was somewhere here. There is plenty of room. Um, so this is probably was kind of uh, an urge to stay in the more leading stocks for this theme um, and uh, maybe just a mental mental fatigue here France um, just getting out again thinking about like not having the loss and just concentrating a lot um, in the specific stocks rather than like being more diversified what are your thoughts on this trade and this mistake mm -hmm. um, well first of all going back to what you were saying about talking about our mistakes um, you know, we're all just like a submarine fires a torpedo. We're the torpedo, and the target that we're going towards is making money. And if we make a mistake, it's getting us off course from making money. So we need to be aware of our mistakes. We need to correct our mistakes just like a torpedo does. So it gets us back on course so we get where we want to go. So that's the whole rationale for discussing our mistakes and, and being aware of them and, and then fixing them. Um, as far as, you know, it's interesting when we were talking about the, the previous trade uh, at Insight where it was kind of a, it was kind of exactly what you were talking about here where um, you were thinking, well, this is the, this, the, the backing up action's already finished. We're ready to move up. And so it's time to get in. And in the case of Insight, it didn't actually necessarily happen as obviously as it did with um, Activision, because with Activision, uh, where you entered was exactly where what you were expecting to happen happened. And then it didn't even really put you into a loss position. It just um, didn't necessarily reinforce the immediacy of what you were expecting 
And again, something that happens to all of us, I'm sure, uh, you don't get the immediate gratific gratification that you want and you kind of lose patience and this is what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, what kind of rules would I have here around this particular mistake? So we were discussing inside, what about ATVI? Um, so again, probably just thinking about the stop loss, where I am, thinking about you know the analytics as well, what is going on, is this just a reaction? Um, uh, and then also, I think that I was most definitely uh, influenced by having other stocks in the same theme. And as, uh, let's say, three stocks in your portfolio react to the downside at the same time, it's much harder to maintain that size mm -hmm. and not to scale out. Uh, so maybe something that I should be thinking uh, about this position in terms of the portfolio sizing of the particular mm -hmm. theme. Um, so uh, that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else, Franz? Any closing thoughts here? Um, just out of curiosity, Roman, um, your selection process, uh, which, you, which you discussed a little bit when you're talking about insight and, and a little bit here, um, but for something like, you know, Activision or Insight to get on your radar screen, uh, what sort of, you know, what sort of exercises are you going through for sure. this thing to get through the, to get through the screens for you? Yes, a really good question. So the first thing that I would look at when we uh, when we're going through the selection is going to be a, a look at the market. Where is the market? I want to see the market in the very long-term position, in the intermediate position, and short-term position. Preferably, I want to see some kind of, you know, reaction, or I want to see some kind of uh, uh, consolidation. And this could be within the context of an uptrend. Then the second thing is I want to make sure that I am looking at the correct industry group. And within this industry group, uh, there is some outperformance, whether a prior outperformance that you know the group is having, or maybe a short-term outperformance that is coming right away right now. So then I want to go to the stocks level and find the stocks that have some kind of causality, some kind of leadership characteristics. Again, this leadership characteristics could be prior leadership, could be short-term leadership uh, that is occurring right now. Um, and then after that, it's all about tactics. How do we go in into the position? Where is our point of the entry? Where is our stop loss? How do we move stop loss? And then obviously, where is our point of exit? So this is roughly the process um, of the selection and into the tactics as to how I would come up with the specific candidate. Um, looks very simple, but each line obviously has you know more to that. You know, each line has a specific skill that you need to develop. Um, but in a nutshell, that's probably how it's going to look. Mm -hmm. That's great. All right. Well, maybe with this or on this, we're going to stop here. Again, thank you for uh, being here with us. Thank you for watching. Um, uh, we kind of feel with Franz that we've got our audience now, you know, those traders that are actually getting a value from watching this recordings, from the analysis of the trades, from the way how we analyze. Um, I urge you guys not just to watch. Don't be just an observer. Be a participant, meaning that go to your trades, past trades, most recent trades, and do the analysis of those trades in the same manner. It's extremely important for us to understand where we make the mistakes. It's important for us to understand the commonality of those mistakes, and then work on the plan, the rules as to how to correct those mistakes. With that, thank you for watching, and until the next episode. Thanks, Roman, and um, I'm going to take that to heart.